Hi and welcome to the library carousel in Middlebury, Indiana. Today we are going to do a step-by-step -step watercolor craft um, that is simple and easy and everybody can um, give it a try. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to go over everything that should be um, in, your, um, in your bag or your kit that you would have picked up from the library. Um, if you are watching this and um, you weren't able to sign up at the library and get your kit, um, you can order these things online. They are available um, at different places like Blick.com or Amazon or Michaels or anything like that. You can also go to a big box um, craft store and pick up some of these supplies as well. So what we are going to be working on um, is this postcard. And this is watercolor um, postcard paper. And um, it is a four by six um, piece of paper. But on the back, you can see, let me turn that around. Um, it's all marked and ready to go. Um, to be sent in the mail. So you have a place to put your stamp, um, the address, and then a quick note over here that you would like to add and share with somebody. On this side, we are going to be doing a watercolor illustration um, and um, some paint techniques that I'm gonna show you. And then on this one, I am showing you the um, the postcard with the paint um, splatters as well on the back. So um, you can do that as well. We're going to do um, the step-by-step -step process. For the first um, 25 minutes, we are going to be working on um, drawing in the illustration so that I can show you step-by-step -step how to draw in the books and the, um, the uh, teacup and then the um, succulents here at the top. Um, but first, before we work with that, let me go over everything that should be in your kit. Now, I did mention that if you went to the Middlebury Library and signed up, you would have gotten um, three things in included in your bag. The first thing is this Koi water brush. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and take this out. There are many water brushes out there. This is um, a brand that I've been using for a long time and I really like it. Um, it comes with um, a cork at the top. You just pull that off. <clears throat> and then you are going to place this underneath the um, faucet and fill it with water all the way up to the top. Um, each brush comes with um, the brush itself. Um, you can get these in different sizes. They're available in um, round, which this, this is round. They're also flat and um, other different kinds of brushes that you can get as well, um, and different sizes. So that is available if you are interested. Once you have filled it with your water, then you simply um, screw on the lid. Now, because this is from Japan, you're going to turn left instead of right um, to screw that on. Um, also, keep in mind that you don't want it to be too tight because you do want um, some pressure applied to your brush so that it releases the water and I will show you that in just a moment. Um, I don't know if you can see on here but it does say push right here. Um, that's where you're going to squeeze it in order to let the water um, go down into the paintbrush and I will show you that in more detail here in just a minute. So I'm going to set that aside. And if you're worried about losing this little cork piece, you can keep it inside of the bag. 
like so. And I'm going to show you two. This is my Koi watercolor um, paint palette, and I'm going to show you it. Um, this is completely optional if you want to get more into Traveler's um, watercolor. This is great to take this with you, like if you go to the park or you go to the zoo and you would like to do some watercolor. So inside, um, this has a, a palette so that you can work out your paints, but then it also comes with the colors here. And it comes with a Koi water brush. And what I like about this is that when I remove the cork, I can set it into one of these little um, spots here, and it fits perfectly. So any of them would be fine. And then I'm all ready to go. And it's small enough that I can put this in my bag or my purse and take it with me wherever I go. So I just wanted to show you that um, if you were ever concerned about losing the little um, the cork piece you definitely don't have to use it you could keep your water brush together at all times but it is good to fill up your water um, brush when you're on the go and you have your water already um, wherever you're traveling to and you want to work on some watercolor so I'll set that aside for um, today's work, we are going to be working with the watercolor pencils. And the reason I decided to do that was one, because of cost. Um, the Koi watercolor sets are more expensive. And so if you're interested in that, that's definitely something that you can you know get for yourself if you want to explore that a little bit more but these are great because you can not only draw with them but once you add water it activates the uh, watercolor and then you can use it just like you would with a paint palette so we are going to work with that um, so you would have gotten your brush in your kit you would have gotten your um, Sargent Art uh, watercolor pencils. It's a pack of 12. And then you also would have gotten one piece of the 4x6 um, postcard. Okay, so you should have also gotten one of these. Now when I buy these, they come in a bundle um, of 20. Um, so if this is something that you really enjoy and you want to do more of it, you can certainly buy the pack of postcards. Um, and like I said, it comes with 20, so then you can really, you know, um, experiment and try new things. Or if you want to um, try it for a birthday party or a get-together or if you just want to make some watercolor uh, postcards to send out to different people you can do that too so if you went to the library you should have gotten these three things in that kit um, in addition I do recommend that you have a pencil it can be any pencil it doesn't have to be mechanical um, an eraser some washi tape or some painters tape and then a piece of a paper towel okay um, in addition, it's completely optional. Um, the, wa the washi tape is optional, but also um, just a, a jar or a glass of water. Now the Koi water brush rinses really well um, just by using some paper towel, um, but it is nice to have a jar of water on the side just in case you need that to maybe um, rinse out your brush a little bit more or maybe you need to add a little bit more water to your page um, and things like that so I just wanted to make that um, clear that, that these two things are optional the water in the jar and then also the washi tape okay so step one is going to be illustrating our piece um, Right here onto our 
um, watercolor paper. So you can take your um, paintbrush and you can set that aside as well as your colored pencils because you're not going to need them um, at first. Same thing with your um, your paper towel and your washi tape and your water. You're not going to need any of that just right from the start. You're going to um, need a pencil and an eraser um, to get started. So when you first look at your postcard, you can figure out how you want to get it set up, um, how somebody is going to receive it in the mail. So um, if this is the back side, then this is the way that they're going to receive it. <clears throat> With that said, we're going to go ahead and start on this illustration. Now at first this may seem a little intimidating to some people because they're like, oh my gosh, I can't draw, I've never had experience drawing before, um, and I'm really not sh sure what to do. I'm going to take you step by step um, through this process. In order to do that, I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see what's going on. Now when you um, are looking at this is a still life. So this is something like if I had a stack of books in front of me and a, a cup on top of it, and then it had the succulents inside of it, then uh, that would be called a still life. So if you want to, by all means, you can pause the video. You can stack up some books and a teacup so that you have something to look at. Um, but I'm going to show you um, some drawing techniques to help you um, get this same look over here. So what we're going to be focusing on are rectangles, okay? And you want them to be in this same space. So as you can see, this book here, it has the same space on both sides, okay? Um, so what I like to do is go ahead and start my bottom line and keep in mind that you want these, these lines to be light. I wouldn't be heavy handed and push down really hard um, because it's going to be harder to um, erase those lines if you want to erase them or um, they're just they're going to show up in your illustration. Now you can see some of my drawing lines, um, but I like that look. Um, so it's completely up to you. So this here, um, it's about three inches or so. If you're, if you want to measure it out, you can, but what I'm really trying to do is keep an equal space on both sides. Um, so that when I draw my rectangle, um, that I have an equal amount of space on both sides, okay? Just like that. Um, if you want to get a ruler out, you can definitely do that. Okay, so I have a ruler here. If you want to do that, um, if you feel like you want to get it um, centered between those four inches, you are going to leave uh, three-fourths of an inch on one side and three-fourths of an inch on the other. Um, let me zoom in so that you guys can see that. Okay, so again, if you um, want to make sure that it is uh, equally between the two sides, again, um, three-fourths in on this side and three-fourths in from this side and then you and then you can mark your lines here okay so that is an option if you want to use the ruler but the idea too is to kind of keep the illustration loose and not so rigid so when you are getting ready to stack the next book as you can see it's a little offset from the one underneath it so I'm just gonna go over a little bit decide how um, how big that I want that book and then I'm going to offset it over here as well so that it looks like it's hanging over the other book and it can be a little skinnier too 
than the other than the book below it okay and just keep in mind that you can always erase if you feel like you've um, if you feel like you need to adjust the height of the book or anything like that now as you can see already mine doesn't look identical at all um, and I, I like to point those kinds of things out so that you're not always comparing your work to um, other people's work. It needs to be, you know, uh, your work and what you have been able to produce. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. You're going to do fine. Okay, so the next book, as you can see, is also um, not perfectly stacked on top of the other. Um, and then another thing that you can, you know, keep in mind is the height too. So here, I definitely have this book that is, um, this book here that is thicker, right? And then you've got this blue one, um, that is also, oh, just about as thick. Okay. And all we're doing is drawing rectangles at this point. Um, so then we're going to put in our next book. Okay, and you're just sketching it in lightly so it doesn't have to be really heavy. And just putting that in. Um, and then my final book at the top here is going to be shorter than the others. Okay. All right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you guys can see that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what I basically have here are five rectangles. Um, they're elongated rectangles um, with short sides and very long tops and bottoms so that they represent the books. You can go ahead and kind of put in these small little details. Um, I like to do that. I think they look more like books when you put those little details in. So I've got this book that has like, you know, maybe a rigid spine. Okay, this one here that has um, uh, like the markings of the book would go on that little sticker um, or if it's not a sticker but it's actually part of the book but it may be, you know, the title or something like that. So I'm just going to each book and I'm um, putting those in. Now, the book at the bottom is laying differently than the other four books. Um, it is um, exposing the papers that are inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw inside of that just a little bit to give myself, and I'll zoom back so you guys can see it, so that I can give myself um, that outer part of the book. Okay, and then you can really see that. Um, you can really see the um, the pages of the book in this bottom one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So then after that, we are going to put in our coffee cup or teacup. Okay. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to make um, an arc like this. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I kind of go back and forth and back and forth. Um, and then you're going to connect it on the other side. Okay, so what I have is the bottom of my saucer, but it is a very long gated um, or stretched out oval. All right. Um, and I made mine kind of longer than the book 
over in this one than I did here, um, which is totally fine. What you're gonna do is in the middle of this, you're going to draw yourself a line, and this is going to the this is going to be the base of your teacup. <clears throat> and then what I want you to do is I want you to make two points up here at the top. Now if you look really closely, it looks like a face. So it looks like you have two eyes and a mouth right here, okay? Um, just to kind of give you like a visual of what you're going for. And then you're going to connect these. Now you can do a straight line up and down, or you can do a little bit of a curve, creating that curve that you see in the teacups or the coffee cups, okay? And then at the top, you are going to do another oval. And this might take some practice. So if you want to grab a piece of paper and you want to try that a few times, you can certainly do that. So let me show you what I mean. So if you practice your coffee cup, you've got the bottom and then your two points, okay? So that gives you your smiley face. You have your art over here or, or straight line and over here on this side, okay? So that gives you your cup. Um, and then you're going to draw an oval, and that might be something that you want to practice. Um, you can also draw your oval first, okay, the base, and then you can connect the lines this way as well, all right? So kind of giving you some options there. Another thing to keep in mind is the height of the cup. Um, so as you can see over here, it's a little bit different. And again, that's okay because it's just something that you're going to be practicing. Um, you can practice and then try it over here. So if I have my saucer at the bottom and this is my um, kind of stretched out or elongated oval, okay? And then I create my base, all right? And then I want to put my two smiley faces out here. Okay, I just made them a little wider than um, the one above. So I made them wider. And then I connect my lines. Okay, and then I do my oval at the top. All right, so then you can see how you can get, you know, more of a coffee cup look or a teacup look. Um, and really, based on um, our little saying, we're going to do um, a teacup, okay? Um, so then once you get that teacup, and actually I will erase this and make it a little shorter. Okay, then you are going to have your handle. Now your handle, I'm gonna zoom in here. Your handle is going to be um, kind of um, like an S if you want to think of it that way. You're going to draw an S and then you're going to do another S on top of it and it's going to create this um, kind of curly Q um, effect, okay? Um, so again, you're going to make an S, and then you make another S, and then you're just connecting those lines. Now, I, that's gotten really heavy, so I'm just going to erase that a little bit so that when I put my watercolor on it, it's not so heavy, but I can still see the lines. All right, last but not least, we're gonna put in our succulents. And these are shapes that are um, almost circular and oval, okay? So you've got um, your circular shape there. 
this one over here, I'm going to make it a little bit more of an oval. All right. Over here on the side, I'm going to make it a little more um, circular again. And then up at the top, I'm going to make um, a bigger one. That's just kind of, um, you can just imagine that line um, connecting all the way around. Now we st still see some of our teacup, okay? So it's you, we can see it wrapping around these succulents, all right? And then at the top, you have uh, these petals. And this type of succulent um, has a little flowers that bloom off of it. And think of um, teardrops. So you're going to create a teardrop shape um, and then another one and another one. You can also think of petals. You can think of them as petals and they are coming off of that flower, okay? Same thing up here. You're going to make a, a teardrop. So when you're making a teardrop, um, the bottom is um, pointed or gathers at the point and then it's rounded at the top. So it's not like a balloon where you would look at something like that. A teardrop comes together almost like a V or a cone if you want to think of it that way. Um, and so that's what you're doing with these. So when they circle around, think about them coming to a point. Okay, just like that. And one more over here. Now I'm gonna show you a different style with this one um, that actually is a little looser and you don't have to be so rigid as far as like, oh my gosh, it has to be this perfect petal. Um, but feel free to kind of move your pencil around like that so that it has a little more character and you can make all of them like that. And then I'll just put another one up here at the top. So you can see that you, there's a different variation. You've got your teardrop and your petals and then you've got this like squiggly line that you can do as well. And that um, is a little more free flowing. Um, so if you feel like you want to do that style, you can. Now, the only the last thing that we're gonna add are these little marks, and they're going to be um, the little um, pieces that kind of come off of your succulent. These are very, these succulents are very similar to like a cactus, but, um, but it is a succulent. So you're just going to kind of make little dashes here and there all around these ones in the back. The front one we're going to do a little bit different and um, we're just going to make dashes. Now what you can do is make a line and then put your dashes in or if you feel comfortable you can just put dashes in like so so that you've got um, the dashes on that one. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out because we are almost done with this first lesson of drawing out your drawing out on your watercolor page. So keep in mind that yours does not have to look identical to mine um, when it comes to the look of it. Um, what does need to line up is you need to have five of um, the books so that when I teach you how to paint these in, obviously you have five, five books that um, match my drawing. And also the teacup. The teacup doesn't have to look exactly like my teacup. You can make it a little longer if you want it to, or taller, I should say, um, a little wider at the top if you want to. And then your succulents at the top, same thing. Um, you know, try to get four of them up here. Um, I'm definitely going to show you some shading technique that we can do, um, but just try to get your four succulents up here, and then we will be ready for the next lesson. So I hope you enjoyed this first lesson of just drawing or and or illustrating everything out. Don't, um, uh, don't be hard on yourself. Just have fun and relax and, and try maybe with a scrap piece of paper if you want. Um, to try it out before you put it on the postcard itself because this may feel more permanent and something that you can sketch on is a great way to practice before you actually put um, the 
drawing that you're going to use for your watercolor illustration, um, which is going to feel more permanent. Um, so I hope that helps, that tip helps, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!